Hi, I'm Mark Keane from Keane Engineering, and I'm going to kind of give you an update on a machine we've been building over 50 years. This is called our DW2 12 volt dry washer or hand crank dry washer. It comes in two configurations it comes as a hand crank unit, basically, you can run it as a hand crank machine. And we also have had for, you know, probably the last 30 years, we've had a 12 volt conversion for it. But unfortunately, the, the company that we, we were buying the 12 volt motors from, they went out of business, and now we found another company who's even building us a better and more robust 12 volt motor. Now, if you want to take a quick look over here, this is a new motor that we're buying. It's not a cheap motor, it's an American made motor, and I could buy it from overseas and buy it for about half the price. But the truth is, I have, I've had some good experience with this company in the past, and if I need spare parts, and we need bearings, I know I can get them. So it's really important to have a nice American-made product. And my brother and I, we're, we've really doing everything we can to get away from anything Chinese-made. Plus, they've stolen millions of dollars of sales from us because they keep copying clip, but I'll get off that stuff, you know, I just get upset. But anyways, as you can see, the machine is a belt-driven hand crank or you can set up as a 12 volt, but I'm really gonna focus on the 12 volt conversion today. So if we take a look here, you can see that we've got a, a fairly large, almost like a probably a four inch diameter motor. It's a high torque motor. I think it has close to about a 10th of a horsepower. So I'm real happy with it. Plus it has a lot of speed range control. See what we're doing is we're utilizing a, uh, a pulse modulation speed control. So what that means is you can actually control the speed of the motor. And what's interesting, the faster you go, the more current you, you pull, but the way, as you run it slower, your current draw drops, drops significantly. So if I had to make a good estimate, we're probably pulling somewhere in the range of about maybe two and a half, three and a half amps on this motor. Because it's actually a little bigger motor than we really need, but again, I have some future products I want to build with this motor. So I'm, I'm focusing on getting something a little bit overpowered so I can utilize it for some other potential products. Now, you know, a lot of guys run as the hand crank because it's small, it's light, it's compact. But the truth is, maybe just my age, I don't want to sit there and crank on that thing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pop my belt off here and then just pop off easy. Try not to get your fingers stuck in it. Um, again, if I'm going to transport it, I'm going to probably just take this pulley here and I'm going to pull that off. So it gives me less stuff to, to move around. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to drop on my, my belt here. Now we just use a small, very flexible belt. In fact, it's really important when you have a 12 volt DC motor system even though it's got a really robust bearing system that you leave the belts loose. You want the belt as loose as you can get it without slipping because I did an experiment uh, earlier today, I had an amp meter on it. And when I had the belt tight, we were pulling almost like, I believe four to five amps. As soon as I loosened up the belt, my amp draw dropped down to about two and a half to three and a half amps. It actually, it's kind of hard to measure because it fluctuates. It goes on the upswing, the amperage goes to about three and a half. On the downswing, it actually reverses the needle and it goes to uh, uh, even a slight charge. See, this is a permanent magnet motor. So if you, if you wanted to, you could even take your hand crank there, hook it up, and you can actually charge your battery with this. It's like a small generator. But that just shows you that it, that's one of the features that we're, we're getting with this high-end motor. Again, that's also why it's not a cheap motor. So to put the belt on, you just slide it on. And again, it's... Uh, you leave, you leave your belts loose, trying to get your fingers stuck in there. And I can basically grab that belt and turn it to about a half twist without too much trouble. All right, so what I'm using here to run the, to run the dry washer, I'm actually using a small U1 battery. That's U1. And this is the kind of the go-to battery I've been using lately. It's a small deep cycle um, sealed battery. So the nice thing about the sealed battery is if you're gonna transport it in the back of a truck or in a car, if it tips over, you're not gonna get battery acids filled everywhere. So I really like these, uh, I think they call it AGM battery. I believe that's what it says. But again, it's a deep cycle U1. And this is the battery we recommend on like our mini maxes and our Keen Super Concentrators. And the weight's nice. It's only about maybe 12 and a half pounds. You'll find that it'll, it'll power the dry washer probably upwards of about 
you know, probably six hours, maybe a little more. And, uh, and you're not running the dry washer constantly all the time. You walk away from it, you turn it off. So this could even go potentially days. And if you do get in trouble and you want to continue mining, you do have a dead battery, you can always just take this belt, disconnect it, and then hook, reconnect your big pulley in your belt and just crank it by hand. So you really have two different ways to go. Um, the one thing I really like about this new motor, besides being an American-made motor and you can get parts for it, um, is it, and it is overpowered as well. The power is like a tenth of a horsepower compared to most of the other ones I've had in the past. We're also good motors, they, but they weren't anywhere near this high power. The only downfall of having something that's high power, it's a more expensive motor. But again, as I said in the past, I have some potential plans to build other 12 volt products utilizing the same motor. So that's why I'm sticking with something a little bit overkill. But what I really like is the speed control. So you can take this thing and I can run the machine too fast or too slow, but you have a lot of control. So watch this. You got a nice on and off switch and you have a lot of control because you want to go very slow. A lot of... that's, that's actually too fast. You never would run that fast. But that's probably about the right speed you want to run it. And I can let this thing run for hours and hours. And this new motor does not get hard to use on it. It's such an efficient motor. Got a lot of power to it. I'll put my foot on here. I'll put some pressure. If I turn it up, I can't hardly stop this to pull. So I know it sounds silly to have all that kind of power, but again, it's for I have a multitude of different products I want to put it on. But again, we've been building this machine for probably in excess of 50 years. Over the years, it's become more efficient, better recovery. Uh, now we have the best motor we've ever had on the past. Um, and it's a very simple, easy to operate machine. And what's nice about these is they're pretty quiet. You know, a lot of places we go dry washing and you don't want to bring, you don't want to draw some attention to yourself. Um, this thing is really nice in that kind of aspect. Um, and it's pretty easy to clean up. Let me swing this around just so you can see how it kind of works internally, other than just talk about the, the features. In the dry washer, um, see most of the, the modern dry washers have a, 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 uh, a constant airflow system. This one is in a, what I classify as a very old school bellows type dry washer. But the way it works, we just flip this up out of the way for the moment. You've got a very simple, simple riffle board. And this is kind of how some of the very early dry washers were built back in the 1800s, even, even before that time. So this is lit out. And you got a very simple riffle board. This is kind of our proprietary clock we put on here that gives you just the right back pressure. But if you look here, it has just a very simple bellows system. And you can see the bellows goes up and down. I really like that speed control. That gives you an idea. So when it really gets cooking, you won't see the good action on this right now, but when it starts cooking, you have a little back pressure this rubber seals up against it. So when the bellows goes down, okay, it sucks in air through here. And when the bellows goes up, this, because of the back pressure from the riffle board, this, this uh, seals, off, seals shut. So you have a, a constant, so you have an intermittent flow of air. So you have a puff, puff, puff. I'll go a little faster, you can just watch it work for a second. Again, this basic design hasn't changed for literally probably 50 years other than you know, efficiency changes and a couple of minor improvements here and there. And then when you want to put this back, you just take this, your wing nut, put it back in here. And then for, and what's nice too is the machine does vibrate when you use it. That, that part of that vibration is actually part of the recovery. You can see the top popper vibrates, this vibrates, that jerking agitation actually helps with the 
making the material fall through the classifier screen better, and it also helps the recovery in, in, this, in the uh, riffle board. But again, this has been a workhorse we've been selling for decades. You know, like I said, that's just a 50 years. Yeah. It's simple, it's quiet, it's relatively inexpensive compared to some of the other dry washers. So you really can't go wrong with it. They don't perform quite as well if you get them into like moist ground as a constant airflow. But for a lot of guys swear by these old machines and, and I still use them on myself on occasion. So it is a good little workhorse. So if you have any other questions, feel free to give us a call. We're always here to help. Take care. Bye.